Hi everyone. I thought I'd share a few thoughts on what I'm seeing happening over the last couple of days here in the United States. I live about 20 minutes from the United States Capitol building and have been there many times, innumerable times growing up, taking visitors, taking friends and family who are visiting us to DC. And even in the last few years, hanging out at the Capitol building on a day off, you know, visiting it different times, spring and the fall. It's an inspiring place to be, historical place to be. And especially the phrase e pluribus unum, I find engraved many places at the Capitol. E pluribus unum, meaning out of many, one. And it's not a coincidence, I think, that many of the things I talk about are also aligned with this phrase, out of many, one. In fact, many of the things I speak about in terms of the second mind could exactly be described by that phrase, out of many, one, and also out of one, many. And so it saddens me to see in the last day what's been happening there. And certainly what we're not seeing now is out of many one right we're not seeing that out of the many differences that we have out of the diversity and multiplicity of opinions that we are recognizing not only what we are essentially not only the essential connection that we all have as human beings but that we're not also recognizing the essential experiment of democracy that is the United States, right? And what it takes to sustain this. And we could see it different ways. We could see that the democracy is broken, or we could see that it is being strained to its limits. We're right at the edge of how much tension such a democracy could take. Either way, this phrase, out of many one and out of one many, is being tested. And I believe, I feel that we have what it takes to pass the test. And I don't mean that just as Americans. Of course, we're talking about the U.S. Capitol here in this instance. But this test of recognizing what it means to say out of many one and out of one many is a call for us to recognize what connects us fundamentally. In the case of a democracy, it is the constitution. It is that which lays out how we govern. And in the case of us as people across the globe, it is also our constitution in the sense it is what we are constituted from. It is what makes up what we are. Recognizing the value of this fundamental constitution and how it governs us and how we govern through it. E pluribus unum. It also reminds me of why I do what I do in terms of communicating like this. It's because I'd like to create a place where people can be heard, right? When people are not heard, then they will listen to anything that makes them feel better, or listen to anything that offers them hope. And autocracies around the world and in history have grown when there is a people that are not heard in some way because of economic hardship or social hardship, some kind of hardship that is not being heard. When that grows, then that group is susceptible to any kind of messaging, regardless of whether it's rational regardless of whether it's even ultimately in their best interest. 
because it speaks to the root of fear and it makes the root of fear vibrate. And that is a lot of the messaging that we're hearing now in the United States. So this is a call to look within ourselves to see what is possible when we recognize the fundamental constitution, right? Not just the constitution of the country. Of course, that is necessary if you're in the United States, but also our very constitution that connects us, that constitutes us. And also to recognize the importance of storytelling. If politics is not making this clear, I don't know what else would make it so clear. To recognize the importance of storytelling, that it's not only enough to recognize our constitution, but then to tell stories about what we are, to relate what we are, to share what we are in such a way that emphasizes this constitution. Right? To reject stories, to set aside stories that do not talk about this fundamental constitution. Right? To be able to stand our own two feet, to value ourselves enough to stand up on our own two feet and assess, is this supporting what we are constitutionally in both senses of the word? So recognizing what we are, recognizing the importance of storytelling, and then amplifying the voices that bring us together. Amplify the voices that stress our connectivity. And not just that, but making room for those who are not heard. Right? That doesn't mean that we work against our constitution, but that means that even in recognizing what we are, we're making space and acknowledging those who are in pain and finding a way to bring them into the fold, to bring them within this constitution that we are. This is why I communicate and when I speak about consciousness or mind or world, it's really not about philosophy to me. In fact, it has very little to do with philosophy. Fundamentally. Secondarily, it passes through philosophy. It may appear as philosophy. I certainly speak about philosophical concepts, whether it's Advaita or materialism or idealism but it's not fundamentally about philosophy. It's fundamentally about our constitution, about what we are, who we are, and what stories we tell about who and what we are. And as we are seeing now, the implications of the stories that we amplify and the stories that we reject. Let's take a moment now. E pluribus unum.